Well, Haskellings, I can't believe it's day three already. Well, we're just going to do a very quick retrospective from yesterday. And uh, I've already gone ahead and actually refactored the code a little bit and put out some useful functions into our advent of code module. So uh, we're importing parsec in this module in the same way as we did with the prelude. Uh, and we're hiding count and parse. I've added this uh, type uh, called parser, and this is actually just a type synonym. This type keyword introduces a synonym. And we're just uh, removing the two parameters that we're always going to use for advent of code. So parser is just the same as parsec string parentheses, which is unit. I'm also replacing the parse function with one that already has the file name parameter filled in with an empty file name, because we'll never use that in Advent of Code. I've put in the count function as well that uh, we had from before. And because I'm hiding the count in parsec, we can actually now use count instead of count lms. The last thing that I've done is I added lines to our interact function. Okay, so let's have a look at the solution code. And not a lot has changed apart from removing the call to lines and changing the type signature of the parser uh, and renaming count lms to count. The last thing I'm going to do, which I'm going to do now, is put the writes function into our advent of code module. And I'm going to do that by just removing those from our solution files and putting those into the advent of code module. It's as simple as that. But I'm also going to add a type signature just for good measure. In Haskell, you don't have to put in type signatures, but it's good to be explicit so the compiler can actually help you know when you do something that you didn't intend to do. And so on to day three we go. All right, let's get our input and let's have a look at it. Okay, so we have a map with hash characters representing trees in this case. All right, well, let's see how we can pull that data into a structure. And we need to think about what sort of structure we would like this data to be in. I'm gonna choose a list of list of Boolean values. In which case, we need to map over our data. And remember, our special interact function already is grabbing the lines into a list. So we're mapping a function over that list of lines. And those lines are each a string, and a string is just a list of characters. So we can map an equality test with the hash character to get us back a list of lists of Boolean values. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a function that will traverse that list in a special way. So we need to, for each line in that list, add three to the x value that we're grabbing out of it. So we're gonna create a function f that's gonna take in that list of lists. We're, we're gonna call it m for map, which is, cause it's a bit, it's like a map of the trees. And then we're going to create a helper function, f prime, ref dash, which goes through this list of lists and takes in a, a velocity argument and an x value. And we're going to grab out of the first line the, the Boolean value at the position of that x value using this evil exclamation exclamation mark operator. And then we're going to use recursion to follow the rest of the list, adding the velocity to x every time. The second line of f prime is uh, just a catch-all that says if the list is empty or there's some other case that we haven't already handled, then we just return the empty list. Next, we uh, call this function f prime with the map and our velocity and our starting x value. And this should give us back the 
list of Boolean values corresponding to the path that we need to follow. Now we get an error here because we forgot to extend the map outwards. And we can do this fairly easily in Haskell by using the cycle function, which we do on each line, which essentially repeats that list over and over again. And there we have our path representing where the trees are along that path. And the only thing we have left to do then is to count the number of trees in that path. And we can use our count function that we made last time. Okay, so let's check to see if we've got the right answer. And we have, and we've earned ourselves a gold star. Okay, let's have a look at part two. And it requires us to do the same thing, except we need to step a different amount each time. But one of the cases required us to step in the y direction as well. That means we'll have to skip rows. And the way we've implemented our function is to actually go through row by row. Okay, so let's add a velocity in the y direction. We're gonna call that w. So let's first update all the places where we're calling f prime to add the y direction velocity. We have to skip some rows and we're going to do that by just ignoring that first element and just recurring without doing anything with that row. Uh, but we need to have a case where we're going to do that. So we're going to do that if our extra parameter, we're going to call this j, and if that is non-zero, then we skip a row. But if it's zero, we process the row and then reset j to w. When we do skip a row, we subtract one from j in the recursive call. Now, this should return us the same result as we had before, but it doesn't because we're actually skipping one too many rows. Uh, we should set this to zero because we actually don't want to skip any rows. Because our function is going to need to actually calculate the product of the, the solutions that we need to find, we're gonna create another helper function to actually do the counting. So that's going to take in the x and y velocities, v and w, and then call f prime on v and w minus 1 to account for the extra row skipping issue. Uh, f can then calculate the product of all of the counts from the solutions that we need. Once we've done that, we should get a result that we can test. And it looks like we've done something wrong here. So let's check this once more. After some debugging, I've worked it out. What we did is we have a typical copy paste error and we've added the velocity to x when we didn't need to, when we skipped a row. This just goes to show you that just because your Haskell program compiles, it doesn't mean that it's correct. So let's check this answer. And we have our second gold star. Until tomorrow, happy Haskelling.